Hello Labradoodle puppy friends. We have a video today that's going to be all about 911. When do you need to go to the vet? How do you know when your puppy is not feeling well? We're also going to give you an update because these Labradoodle puppies from our Rainbow Rhapsody litter are four weeks old. So we're going to give you an update on Mama Rain and we're going to give you an update on each of the seven medium Australian Labradoodle puppies in this litter. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Labradoodles and we are going to start off today by letting you watch the feeding frenzy here. You can see that when all seven puppies try to nurse at the same time, they're pretty much the same size as Mama Labradoodle Rain. Now at four weeks old, this is when we see our Mama Labradoodles start to do a little bit of weaning of their puppies. So Rain has full control over this for this week. She's the one who decides whether she's going to be in here with the puppies or she's going to be out and letting them eat on their own. And the puppies have graduated from their initial solid food, which was just goat's milk and pablum, to eating raw mixed with some goat's milk. And I think we have some made up there, maybe not. Nope, they finished it last time, Reynolds said. Oh, there's a little bit left. So we can put this pan down. This is just a little bit of what they have left there. And then anybody who's still feeling hungry after nursing can go and clean up what's in the pan there before we give them a fresh one. The pumpkin is in there to give them a digestive aid, but we will start to remove that at the end of this week. And maybe nobody's even going to be interested in it. They may all just decide that the milk bar is where they want to be right now. So once Rain um, starts showing us that she's very serious about weeding, and how she's going to do that is she's going to be away from the puppies for longer and longer. Then we will start having her with us pretty much all of the time and just having her come in for scheduled feeds with the puppies. So we start by doing that uh, with just three minute intervals, four times a day. And then by the time the puppies are six weeks, that'll be cut down to them only nursing for one minute once a day. And then she'll be ready to go home because she says, yep, I'm, I'm pretty much close to being done. Uh, today, we are also changing the puppy's collars. And Rain's decided that she's going to help herself to some of their food. So I'll probably just pick that up because she's already had her lunch and we don't need her to be eating what's made for the puppies. So today we're changing their collars from the puppy collars they were born with over to these slightly more substantial, they're called ribbon collars. And that's because the other collars are too small for them now. So I'm just moving through each of the puppies here and making that transition. It's a little bit of a, a tricky business when Rain's in here because I'm trying to tighten them up a bit and they are of course anxious to go see Rain. So the puppies are all doing great. Mama Rain is very happy with them. She and Misha, our other mom who's here with us having puppies, they've made friends now. Initially, there was some animosity between the two of them because it's natural for mama dogs to protect their puppies from any possible predators. And although it sounds quite awful, mama dogs, their hormones tell them to go ahead and fight to the death to protect their puppies and when they see another mama dog to them that's a huge threat because mama dogs will kill another mama dog's puppies because their instinctive behavior is for their puppies to survive at all costs and their scarce resources which would be food under normal circumstances and so that way they eliminate the the uh, competition for that scarce resource so it's a lot of management that's required and there's a lot of tricks that we employ in order to have the girls able to get along. They're in separate rooms right now, but after this weekend, they will be sharing the doodle den together. Now they'll be secure and completely kept away from one another's puppies. However, they will be in the same room. They'll know each other's here. They were together before when their puppies were all infants and we got them getting along then. But now we're just moving to making sure that they're comfortable again. So how do we do that? 
So one of the tricks we do is the mom's favorite thing is to be able to run out the back and we restrict their access to out back when the puppies are still very young and their immune systems quite immature. Once we're confident their immune systems are a little bit more robust and able to manage things that mom's going to bring back in on her feet because we do have wildlife through our property regularly then we let the mums out back. So because this is such a hooray happy time for the mums, we do it so that Rain and Misha go out together. That way they're so distracted by the excitement and the thrill of being outside in the back and able to run. They don't focus on having an argument with one another. They focus on having the fun and the freedom and then they begin to associate that with one another and then we have a much smoother transition. Now, of course, we are always monitoring them 24 seven to make sure nothing goes sideways on that. But it's much nicer for everyone if it's a nice, pleasant, relaxed atmosphere. So today we're going to talk about puppy 911. When do you need to go to emergency? When do you need to go to the vet? How on earth do you know if your puppy is ill or seriously ill when they can't talk to you. So step one is getting to know your puppy and understanding what your puppy is saying to you by knowing their body language. This is something that's going to come with time. You're not going to know your puppy immediately when you take your puppy home, of course. You're going to have to spend a couple of weeks to a month getting to know them, being familiar with their routine, their body language, how they are acting. So right now, if you look at these puppies, they're all lively. They're all squirming all over me. Nobody's lying around on their own. And we even have a go to doodle here lying on top of Rain's head. So we can tell that everybody's doing well. So how would we know if something was wrong? Well, if something was wrong with one of these puppies, they would have probably removed themselves from the rest of the litter and likely be in the crate all on their own and not interested in coming out when we came in to interact with them. Sure, they do sleep in the crate by themselves and there's nothing untoward about that in and of itself. But what we do look for is if the puppy is not interested in engaging with us, if the puppy's not lively, if the tail isn't wagging, if the eyes aren't bright. Now, when you take your puppy home, there are some signs that you can watch for to tell you when your puppy's not feeling well. Now, some of these signs are similar to a stress signal. So this is how it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of becoming familiar with your puppy before you're going to be able to ascertain, oh, this is my puppy just being stressed or this is my puppy showing me they're sick. So the signs of stress in your puppy are yawning when they first wake up or if it's late or they've been out exercising, yawning is entirely normal. But if you have a puppy like, we'll use red collar girl here, and I'm going to pick her up and hold her. And being held is something that doesn't happen normally in dog world. And if this was stressing her, we might see her go as a self-soothing way of dealing with the stress and the anxiety of being picked up. By the time the puppy goes home with you, they'll just love being picked up, so you won't have to worry about that. But yawning at odd times, that's something to take a look at. And then look and see, well, what's going on? Is the puppy yawning because there's strangers here, there's dogs they don't know, uh, are there sounds happening that they're unfamiliar with? In which case, that's a totally normal response and no need for concern. Panting. Dogs, if they're panting because it's very hot out or if they've been running and playing vigorously, that's normal. But if your dog is lying down and they haven't been running or playing vigorously and they're panting, that's a danger signal. Panting is also a sign of stress and that when they're panting at times when you wouldn't expect them to, it's from stress that's related to pain. Your dog's in pain, they're panting because of that pain. The other thing you might see is your puppy trembling or looking like they have the shivers. That too is a response to pain. So puppies throw up 
fairly, not regularly, but it's not a, like an out of this world, oh my goodness, we need to go to the vet immediately event if your puppy throws up. It's kind of like kids. They tend to throw up more often than adult dogs do. And puppies are very curious and they get into a lot of things. And quite often they may have eaten a, a leaf or a twig or something. And it's not agreeing with them, whatever it is, and up it comes. Now if that happens and then they carry on, they're lively, their tails wagging, they're interested in you, nothing to worry about. You can just chalk that up to what we call inappropriate ingestion. But if your puppy's panting and throws up, if your puppy's panting and shivering, even before they throw up, those are causes for concern. If they throw up and they shiver after and they pant after, same thing. That's cause for concern and you want to phone your vet. If you can't get in to see your vet or it's after hours and you can't phone your vet, you want to go to emergency with your puppy because there's something else going on. When they're responding with pain, something's wrong. And that could be something where, let's say, they did swallow a bit of a stick and it maybe has become blocked and needs to be dealt with. One of the most notorious things that young dogs and sometimes adults get into is our laundry baskets. They have a pension for our socks and of course our underwear. Now underwear is usually too big for them to swallow, but socks are easy for them to swallow. And sometimes when they do swallow them, then we get a blockage that does require surgery in order to save the puppy's life. So make sure those are signals that you're looking for all the time. And you'll get to know if your puppy's being dumpy, if they're despondent, if their eyes are not as bright as normal, if they're carrying themselves in kind of a oh, down in the dumps kind of way. Now you see one of the puppies right now is sleeping here and has themselves all tucked in behind the crate. This is not something to worry about. This is just a puppy who's sleeping and really likes the idea of being a little bit out of the main uh, source of activity going on. That's normal behavior. There's no panting, there's no shaking, there's no crying. Crying, of course, is another sign of when you need to go to the vet. Now, sometimes your puppy will limp and in the summer, if, you, if your puppy's going like this with their paw up and they're crying, chances are they've stepped on a wasp or a bee and they've been stung. And normally there's no cause for concern with that. Just look if the stinger's there, remove it like you would out of your own skin with some tweezers and then everything should be well within a few hours. If your puppy swells up around their face and their neck area, then that's when you're going to be worried because they're having an allergic reaction to the sting. And for that, you can give your puppy Benadryl. You can find out all about that in terms of dosages on Google. But if you're a Van Isle Doodle parent, what you want to do is email me and I'll walk you through it. It's also really critical if you do ever give your puppy Benadryl that you're very careful to read every ingredient for the variety you've got and that there is no xylitol, spelled with an X, or birch sugar. It's the same thing, just traded under a different name. Those two things can be fatal to dogs. So it's very important there's no artificial artificial sweetener, uh, which is what xylitol is, in the Benadryl that you're choosing to use. Now if your puppy's throwing up and they throw up maybe once or twice, there's nothing too concerning about it, they're just being sick, Gravol is excellent to help calm the tummy. Again, you want it to be completely plain Gravol and make sure you read through and there's no aspartame, no xylitol, no food coloring, nothing like that, just plain Gravol. Gravol is a natural product uh, and so it's, it's quite safe to give your puppy if they are being sick. If they continue being sick, then you need to go to the vet. If they keep throwing up time and time again, you want to go to the vet. The number one thing we're worried about when your puppy is throwing up and why we go to the vet is that they might get dehydrated. It's really easy for them to become dehydrated. A really simple way to test for that is you pick the skin up between their shoulder blades here, give it a little twist, 
and see how it goes snaps right down immediately? This puppy is well hydrated. A puppy who was dehydrated, their skin would stay up and it would take a long time before it would flatten back down. So it's very easy for puppies to be dehydrated quite quickly if they're vomiting, especially if that's a, um, accompanied by diarrhea. Now, if you've got diarrhea, mm, this is something that also happens quite frequently with puppies because they're so curious. So if they have a couple of bouts of loose stool, yeah, and you, you just take a look, make sure there's nothing, no blood in it or anything. If it's just a lo loose stool, the best thing of all to help with that is a natural product that is uh, easily available to you and is just a little powder that you add into their food. You just need a quarter of a teaspoon once a day for a puppy and uh, that will fix them up really quickly. It's a nice natural digestive aid and it does deal with uh, diarrhea really quickly and that's Slippery Elm. You can get that from us at curatedcanines.com. Uh, it's especially got a little scoop, especially for dogs with the measurements in there for the right amounts to give to the puppy. You can give Slippery Elm all the time if you really want to. Um, I only use it when puppies or adult dogs have a loose stool or if they've got a tummy upset. Even if they're thrown up or they just look like they're a little bit off, I'll give them some Slippery Elm to help them. Pumpkin also is really helpful uh, and so sometimes if something's off like this what I like to do is get a little bit of slippery elm, a little bit of pumpkin and a drop of colloidal silver. I mix it together and I smear it on the roof of their mouths and usually you only need to do that once or twice and everybody's uh, feeling better quite quickly. Okay, they don't, he's not really wanting you to do that because that was where he was sleeping, yeah. Yeah, are you okay there? There we go. Now, when you're watching the video today, you may see the puppies scratching a lot, and that's because I've just changed their collars. So these are much more substantial. So when they're scratching, that's also a sign of stress. If you're playing with your puppy or your puppy's doing something, and all of a sudden you see them kind of scratching like this, they're not going on their ear or on the back like that but they're kind of going like this in a haphazard way and no particular spot on their body that's another sign of stress so usually that doesn't mean they have fleas or that there's something going on that they're scratching themselves because they're hugely itchy it usually means that they're stressed and that's another sign of them trying to self-soothe so with time, you'll learn what your puppy's telling you. Just pay attention, watch their body language, get to know them and what they're telling you all the time so that when something does go wrong, you know if it's something you can easily manage at home or if it's something that you need to go to the vet for. When in doubt, always go to the vet. Please do not ever hesitate to email me if you are one of my families at any time in your dog's life, email me and ask if you need to have any advice given. I always like to err on the side of caution and go see the vet. It's one of the reasons why pet insurance is handy because you don't have to worry about the cost of these things if you have the insurance. I'd rather go to the vet and go to the vet early just in case it is something. I'd rather go and find out, no, it's totally fine. You don't have to worry. Then wait for two, three days and then find out, holy smokes, this is a serious infection and now we've got a major problem. So I can tell you that when a dog does get something, and this can come from a toy, this can come from a leaf, this can come from bad food, it can come from gravel, it can come from grass, and that is some kind of bug. They're around. People get them, dogs get them. You can have a healthy dog and if they happen to get into something, they can get that bug and they can get an infection. Now if you leave it and that infection continues to fester, usually you can smell it in their breath or in their poop. You can tell that something's not quite right. Now it may sound really weird and gross, 
but knowing what your dog's poop looks like and smells like normally is really important because that's always a really good clue when something goes wrong. You'll notice that the poop doesn't smell the same. If it's smelling strong, usually that means something's off. If you leave it for too long, your dog can become, uh, it can go into sepsis and sepsis is of course fatal and we don't want that to happen. So please don't wait, go to the vet, go to emergency. It doesn't matter if you go and there's nothing. No one's going to think you're stupid. Yes, it will have cost you a bit of money, but much better to be safe than sorry. So now let's talk about something more cheerful. Let's talk about these little rascals who are now all conking out just when I want them all to come to me so I can tell you what their weights are. They're doing really well. They took their transition to raw food easily. They moved into the doodle den easily. We have them now out running loose in the doodle den. Oh my goodness, I just think that is hallelujah. How much fun is this? They bebop all over the place. They explore and they are really just have the nicest, confident personalities. And you could see pink collar there was just scratching at her collar because she's not too sure what this thing is around her neck. Now, when you take your puppy home, we do not want you to have a collar for your puppy. We want you only to have a harness. Collars serve no function at all. The only reason they have them here with us is so we know who's who. Because when you have a litter like this, it's really hard to tell them apart. And it's important we have the right puppies so that we know what's going on with them. These are what we call breakaway collars. If anything gets on them, they just come off just like that. They, they fall off really, really easily. And they're just little bits of ribbon. But otherwise, we don't recommend that you ever have a collar for your dog. They absolutely serve no function whatsoever. They break the hair and map the hair around their neck. If you use them with a leash, they're very hard on and can make a big mess of their trachea muscles and cause permanent damage. It's a harness that you want to have for your puppy all the time. And that's what you're going to use whenever you're taking them out and whenever they're on a leash. And the harness also should never be worn in the house because it too can be dangerous in the house. If you've got tags and ID things, you can clip them onto the harness just as well as you can clip them onto your dog's collar. My goodness, Miss Pink, you're just really right in here today. Miss Pink thinks she's the star of the show today. And since you are the first puppy in the litter, we might as well tell everybody a little bit about you. I'm just going to grab my phone so that I have everybody's weights here. And I can tell you how well they continue to develop and how well they continue to grow. So Miss Pink is now 1.86 kilograms. She is the biggest puppy in the litter. She has a lovely temperament. She's very kissy and friendly, as you can see, huge eye contact, and she will, as you're seeing right now, pick to be with people over her litter mates. A very nice, confident puppy that I love you too. Now I'm gonna put you down and see the rest of your family, okay? Next we have Red Collar Girl, if I'm able to find her. Is she in the crate, Reynolds? And she's probably in the crate. I have purple over here. And just, is she behind here? Behind me or behind? The crate oh, there she is. Thanks. <laughs> here we go, Red Collar Girl. Red Collar Girl is a very sleepy girl. This little girl has also got excellent eye contact. She's a gentle little soul. She got a little bit of bad uh, bedhead going on there, having a bad hair day. She is a very kind and sweet puppy. And you can see when she gives me her eye contact, she looks and she drops her eyes off, which means she's a very submissive kind of puppy at this point in time. That may change, of course, and part of it is because right now she's falling asleep. And Miss Red is 1.72 kilograms. Very good, thank you, sweetheart. I'll put you back right over here and you can go for your nap, clump. And then we have green collar boy. Hi, sweetheart. And here we go with green collar. Here comes pink to get everybody woken up again. Here we go, our handsome little man. This little guy is now 1.47 kilograms and he still is the smallest puppy in the litter. He's just a little doll. 
just the cutest little thing. Nothing bothers him. He's very easygoing. He tries not to offend anybody ever. He likes to just do what everybody wants him to do, and he's always looking to find out how to please everyone. Okay, Pink, you can't be the center of attention all the time. No, you can't. And your brothers and sisters are sleeping right now. Here, you come and sit on my lap, and let's give you the monkey. Here, why don't you play with the monkey? See if you want to play with the monkey. She says, no, that's not really what I want to do. And then we have purple collar here, purple collar girl. And she's having a good snooze too. Purple collar is the same as red, 1.72 kilograms, the exact same weight. I'll be eating that fun. Purple collar is also a gentle little spirit. You can see a lot of their dad in here. It's really interesting to see who's got mom's personality and who's got dad's. Pink is definitely like her mom, and purple here is definitely very much like her dad. A little bit sleepy right now, having a hard time holding her head up. Gentle, sweet, calm little girl. And like I said, the same weight as red at 1.72. And then we have blue collar boy. Oh, thanks, Reynolds. Reynolds just getting him out of the crate for me. Hello, handsome. This guy, oh, he's a character and a half. He's got a really fun personality, bit like pink. Not quite so interested in being the center of attention, but you see that immediate strong eye contact with him. He loves to play. He loves to get out and rock and roll, explore everything, and just have so much fun. Yes, he does. And my little blue is 1.57 kilograms. So he and green are fairly close in size. Then we've got orange collar. Mm, no, where is orange? Behind the crate. Oh, orange is the one behind the crate. I know, I'll just see if I can, I think I might need to get a, a Reynolds assist. Oh, he probably can't reach orange either. There we go. <laughs> Whoops, it is. <laughs> there we go. There we go, Mr. Orange. Oh my goodness, hiding back there, trying to not have to come in front of the camera. Orange collar loves to be sleeping where he's all tucked up with something, just like he's showing you there. Otherwise, he's a lot of fun, really good eye contact with his puppy too. Very interactive with people. He's a very social boy. One thing we find with all these puppies is they have a really, really strong love for people. And orange is 1.61 kilograms. And then last but not least is yellow collar girl. We'll see if orange will stay sleeping there. Hello, hello yellow. Yellow is an angel too. Another girl who is a very gentle soul, a little bit like her dad, sweet personality, very easygoing, very keen on finding out what the people want. She can't even keep her eyes open for that eye contact right now, but she does have excellent eye contact. Nothing bothers her too much either. She's just a gentle, free spirit. And she is 1.63 kilograms. So that's all the puppies for today. Coming up this weekend is our puppy family visit. Uh, everyone will get an email from me about the visit and we can't wait for you to all come and meet the puppies in person. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We hope you have time to take a moment to leave us a comment about the video and ask any questions you may have, of course, as well. And if you don't have time for that, maybe a thumbs up would be much appreciated. And we thank you all for watching and we'll see you all when we come back for our next update for the Rainbow Rhapsody Australian Labradoodle Puppies.